Greetings YouTube, this is BJ Black and I'm back with more Monster Monster Girl Quest Paradox RPG Catalyst Chapter. Today we're going to be visiting the town of Pornov. But first well, But first I need Luca to get more life. So I'm going to save in the end one more time. Rest in the end one more time. I need to get an item in the slum with no name in order to complete a quest in Pornolf, so I'll be right back. And I'm back. That did literally take about five seconds, but I cut it out. And now we're off to Pornolf. It's south and east of our starting town. That hole there is one of the Tartaros. I mentioned those briefly. We'll be visiting that in the next installment. Here in Parnolf is the... a bunch of weirdos, really. The town of Pornoth. In short, Porno Town. And they all act pretty much like you would expect from a name like that. In this house is this guy, whom you can recruit somehow. I don't know how, and to be honest, he's a freak, so I don't want to. In this house is another person you can recruit. He is less of a freak, but I'm still not really interested. He does tell you that if you get your player's player job up to level 10, you get the ability to steal panties off of monster girls. But the reason we're here is for this girl. This is the rabbit that Amira told us about. Except it's not the right rabbit at all. And here is the last time I believe it says, you've got the wrong rabbit. So the end of that running joke. This rabbit however saw the other one and can give us her general whereabouts. In Pornoff Town, there's this fortune teller who can give us a slip that lets us be fortune tellers as well if we get the item I got in the Nameless Slum. I thought it was the item that I got in the storehouse, the underground storehouse in Eliasville, but it turns out you had to go and win the battle in the tent in the Nameless, the slum with no name. Talk to her once, and talk to her a second time with the item, and you can give it up. You'll get the slip, and the fortune teller will run off. Now, when coming after out from the inn after talking to the bunny, Elias was helpful enough to tell us that we can get steel iron items from this blacksmith here, except he doesn't have any iron to work with, so we can go get it in a mine. And that's exactly what we're going to do. But before I forget, I'm glad I wrote notes down because I definitely would have. We're going to kick Minnie out of our... Whoops. Oh, I just unequipped everybody's items. We're going to kick Minnie out of our party. And remember to talk to the bat, exit the shop, and then Vanilla will tell you what she wants next. She wants to get Phoenix Tails for her shop. Well, we know exactly how to do that. I may not have mentioned it explicitly, but whenever you have party members, if you kick them out of your party, they will go to a various spot in the Pocket Mao Castle. Mini goes here. So Vanilla gets to talk with Minnie about Tails. Minnie is naively wanting to be her friend. And Vanilla reverts to her bandit ways and tries to trick her into being... Trick her. Into giving up her Tails and growing into an adult faster. 
Well, Minnie's seen this before and she's not falling for it. So, Vanilla does it the regular way. She is trading off uh, meat with bones. You could think of it as a bone in steak, but usually it's raw. You see it frequently in anime, it's just meat wrapped in a bone. The the uh, the first I remember it is the bait you used in the first Zelda game. In any case, Vanilla is talking about trading those for Phoenix Tails. Minnie wants uh, a good deal on it, and they talk about it for a while. And with this completed, you can buy Phoenix Tails from. Whoops. Oh, here's another feature. If you, if your characters like you enough, they'll give you presents. Phoenix, for example, at, or Mini, for example, at a certain level will give you a Phoenix tail. Each character has a present list. Looks like I needed 10 affection points in order to get the Phoenix tail. And after that, three more things that at increasingly hard levels. In order to get their affection points, every battle they engage in, while they're in the first four slots here, the backup characters don't gain the points like that. They will gain one point and you can also give them presents here. But I want Minnie back in my party so I'm going to put her. Select that and she'll be right there. It's swap him her out for Luca. Someone else? No. Let's put Lumi in front. Most of my characters are level eight now, except for Sonia, because of that grinding I did at the end of the last installment. Since Sonia was dead, she didn't get any level ups. However, well, she was dead for most of it. You know what, I like Minnie a lot more than Lumi, so I'm going to put her in front. So that then, let's go get a chunk of iron. Elis observes that it's dark and claustrophobic in here. She would like to specifically mention she's not afraid. And Vanilla emphatically says that she's not afraid of the dark either. And Gob points out, you're a vampire and you're afraid of the dark? What the hell is up with that? This is one item I'm going to talk to you about. It's a seed of power. You can get this in various places and seeds of other things. Seeds of life, seeds of defense, seeds of uh, experience. And if you use one of them on a character they gain Oops. They can gain, in this case, two attack power permanently. There's a seed of magic which increases magic attack power permanently by two. The yes, the seed of life gives you five HP, and I think the other things are all two. They're rare items, but keep your eye out for them as they're very valuable. This guy will talk to us about how deep the cave is. There are three floors. He's resting here. And in the bottom floor we can find the iron we're looking for. I know everybody's been wondering why I call this Catalyst Chapter, where most people will call it Part 1 or Part 2. Now here there's the notice this sparkle, it's kind of hard to see because it's, the contrast isn't very good, but this is where you can find the iron chunk. Interestingly, it's a big enough chunk of iron that no matter how much you use of it, you will never run out. So this is the catalyst chapter, as I repeatedly say at the beginning of each of these. In Japanese it's Zensho 
which means beginning and chapter. This guy's flirting with a bunny girl when he's supposed to be resting. Well, I suppose that's still resting. He observes we got our chunk of iron, though. I decided to translate Zensho into Catalyst chapter. Because it's uh, going to be a three chapter thing, I borrowed the Catalyst phrase from... That's right, the three-act structure Wikipedia article. The second chapter I'm going, which is Chusho, or middle chapter, I'm going to call it the confrontation chapter, and the third chapter, Shucho, Shusho, or concluding chapter, I'm going to call it the climax. Now that we've got that iron in hand, we can get iron items from the synthesis guy here, but also, and much more importantly, we can recruit Puppy! She's here learning how to be a blacksmith. And if you de decide to try and recruit her, she'll be glad you did, but she doesn't want to leave here until she's learned what she can. Which includes how do you work iron. The boss here says that he would like to teach her too, but he, all he's got is crap iron and it isn't good enough for teaching purposes. So if we can get some and bring it here, then she'll join our party. Well, look at that, we have it. So, puppy gets to learn how to forge iron. Ugaga! Her sound effect is kind of funny. We get an iron sword out of it, but much more importantly, Puppy joins our party. Let's kick Lumi out. And Goba and Vanilla are happy to be partying together again. That leaves one more of the four bandits. She can be recruited in two more chapters, or two more installments, I believe. And now that I've completed that, that wraps up my tasks for this installment. Just for a little preview, where we're going next is the Tartaros. That bunny we spoke to in Pornov told us that the white rabbit has been appearing here from time to time. And now that we've seen that scene, we can see this scene. Where uh, the white rabbit frets about being laid and jumps into a hole. Somebody went and read their Lewis Carroll. And that will conclude this chapter. Hmm. Actually, on the other hand, I think I will try and recruit that sheep girl again. Just spend a few minutes on that. Now that I'm leveled up high enough, I should be able to run away from these characters with good regularity. Sheep! Holy cow. First try. This is Mary, the sheep girl. And I don't need her literally in my party. So I'm going to send her back to the Mao'o castle. And now that we've done that, we can see a couple of scenes. 
Here in the nameless slum, you may recall this pub we went into. And you may also recall there was one seat empty in it. It's not empty anymore. This sheep, Mary, is a drunkard. You can find her in every single pub in the game. Getting all drunk. And Barney will come in, complain about her drinking too much, and drag her home. Mary literally bleats as she's dragged away. For every scene you do this, it will be slightly different. This is the same one. But if we go to the next pub, perhaps Pornoff has one, the scene will change slightly. I thought this might have been a pub, but it's a casino. Yeah, no more pubs, so no more scenes with Mary and Barney. So with this, I will end the chapter. Oh geez, I need to take that off. Alright, back to the Tartaros, and we will save and see you next time.